Good morning. I'm Ron Alcorn, the congregation of Zion Lutheran Church in downtown Hamilton, Ohio, welcomes you to our Sunday worship service. We're happy you've joined us in praise and worship of our Heavenly Father. We're broadcasting live on Sundays at 10 a.m. through Facebook and Radio WMOH on 1450. Both are easily accessed through our website at zionhamilton.org. If you'd like to follow our service with our Sunday bulletin, please call our church office at 513-863-5774 or email us at zionlutheranoffice at gmail.com and we'll put you on our weekly email distribution. May God's blessings be with you all. For the service today, our first lesson is taken from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 4 through 8. We will then read responsively Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8. And then the second lesson is taken from Ephesians. That's chapter 4, verse 25, and through chapter 4, verse 2. And the gospel lesson is taken from John, chapter 6. That's verse 35 and verses 41 through 51. Today's worship assistants are worship leader, Pastor Joe Schrock, organist, Sarah Kim, Lector Julia Hilbert, singers Leanne Bowling, Sherry Gerald, and Netta Brown, Facebook administrator Ernie Beck, and your radio announcer is Ron Alcord. Can we now return you to our worship service? Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Please remain standing as we sing, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer, 618.
the grace of our Jesus, excuse me, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food we may live as his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for both announcements and the readings. Good morning. Here we have a plethora of announcements this morning. As a part of our protective practices for the COVID Delta variant, today we will remain in our pews for passing of the peace. You can just wave the peace or you can fist bump the person in front of you or behind you, but please remain in your pews. Worship and music and council will be meeting this week to discuss what further protections we have to put into place.
So next Friday, when the bulletins are sent out, we will have the update on what those decisions were, so you can get it then. And of course, we'll tell you on Sunday when you come to church. Today, masks are strongly suggested, but not mandatory. Thank you. Good morning. I am here to announce the August Adult Fellowship. We're having this at the Valley Vineyards on August 21st, uh, 6.30 p.m. It is a cookout, and the standard dinner is $35. It's a New York strip or a salmon strip, shrimp or crab cakes. Uh, you have the side dishes as buffet as well as the desserts. And then there's a vintner dinner that is $45. It includes a filet mignon. And I just wanted to let you know that you can either sign up in the Great Hall, you can contact Julia, you can email me, it's on the uh, announcement, or you can call me personally, depending on what's easiest for you. My number is 513. 515-4620. Hope to see you there. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the quilters asked me to let you know that they have moved their meeting time to this coming Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. at Zion. They would like to invite anyone who might be interested in join, joining them. All are most welcome and no previous experience is necessary. I wanted, also wanted to take a moment to let you know that next Sunday is the blessing of the backpacks and briefcases, anything you carry to work, anything that kids carry to school. Um, they'll be blessed at the, ten, at, at the service for protection and success. And um, knowing that we all have busy schedules at that same time after the service, there is an athlete training for all children fourth grade and up, or I should say four foot and up, you gotta be able to carry this stuff. But um, you'll be, it's a refresher and we're asking all children to attend, even if they've been trained before, there are some changes due to COVID. We're also saying during this time, we will be meeting with the parents. There'll be a separate meeting with the parents to show them where the robes are now being kept, There's a new location, and um, to answer any questions or concerns anybody might have. So thank you and we look forward to seeing everybody. And mask, of course. The first lesson is from 1 Kings chapter 18, and it describes the context between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. The, con the contest proves that the Lord is God, and afterwards Elijah orders the killing of the Baal prophets. Angered by the death of her prophets, Queen Jezebel threatens to kill Elijah. The, this reading finds Elijah feeling fatigued and in utter despair. And now the reading, 1 Kings, Elijah, 1 Kings 1, 9, 4 through 8, or 19, 4 through 8. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I'm no better than my ancestors. <laughs> Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. He looked and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stone and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, get up and eat. Otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank and then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, 
the Mount of God. Word of God, Word of Life. We will now read responsibly Psalm 34, 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will glory in the Lord. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. I sought the Lord who answered me. Look upon the Lord and be radiant. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The second lesson is from Ephesians 4, 25 through 5, 2. Christians are called to be imitators of God. This does not mean Christians are perfect. Rather, the Spirit is at work in our lives so that our actions and attitudes genuinely reflect the love and forgiveness we have received through Christ and his death. And now the reading. So then, putting away falsehood, letting all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, rather than rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hand, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building each other up. As there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. After feeding more than 5,000 people in the wilderness, Jesus teaches them regarding the true significance of this remarkable sign. And here begins the gospel. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, And they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. 
This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and the kids are invited for, for a message. All right. You're going to have to do double duty today. Can you make animal noises? You don't know. Okay, well, let me tell you what the animals are. And then you just do the best you can. You got a choice of a pig, a duck, cat, or a dog. Okay, you want to do the dog? Do you want to do a dog too? Would it be easier? No? Okay. Well, may, maybe grandma or grandpa will make some animal noises too. All right. And the rest of you can join in. If, but you have to do pig, duck, cat, or dog. No zebras or lions or anything. All right. So some of us may remember the story about the little red head. And so, okay. Well, this would be brand new then. So I'm, I printed it off so I wouldn't forget any of it. And so every time I, as the hen, ask you a question, you have to make animal noises. Okay. And that goes for the rest of you too. All right. So once upon a time, there was a little red hen. One day, as she was scratching for breakfast for her chicks and herself, she found some wheat seeds. Who will help me plant this wheat, she asked. Okay, well, we got a cat. All right. Apparently, the dog, the duck, the dog, and the pig are all too tired. All right. So not I, said the pig. Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Then I will plant the wheat myself, said the little red hen, and she did. The sun shone, the rain fell, and the wheat grew. After many days, it was ready to cut. Who will help me cut the wheat, asked the little red hen. All right. So now it's the duck that answered. All right, that's good. Well, we're getting through them. So then, I will cut the wheat myself, said the little red hen, and she did. Next, the wheat needed to be ground into flour. Who will help me carry the wheat to the miller? Asked the little red hen. Wolf. All right, we got the pig and the pig and the and the dog this time. Then I will carry the wheat myself, said the little red hen, and she did. When the flour was ready, it needed to be made into bread and baked. Who will help me make the bread? Asked the little red hen. All right, we're doing better at doing all of them. All right. So, then I will make the bread myself, said the little red hen, and she did. When the bread had baked, the little red hen took it out of the oven. The bread is ready, light and sweet, she said. Now who will come and help me eat? Yeah, see, they're very enthused about the eating part. I will, said the pig. I will, said the duck. I will, said the cat. I will, said the dog. But the little red hen said, You did not help me plant the wheat. You did not help me cut the wheat. You did not help carry the wheat. You did not help me bake the bread. And now you will not help me eat. My little chicks and I will eat the bread. And they did. All right. So what do you think of that story? Good? Maybe good if you're the hen or the little chicks. What about the, the dog and the pig and the duck? Yeah, yeah. So they, they wanted to eat the bread, but they didn't want to help make the bread. Is that, does that ever happen in your house? No? My mom does not make bread. Oh, mom doesn't make bread. Okay. Okay. Well, now that we're literal about that. Well, does she make cookies? Yes. So does she ever get help making cookies? Sometimes, but you get to eat the cookies all the time? No, he doesn't get to eat them all. Well, no, you don't have to eat them all. That might hurt our bellies. But, uh, but you get to eat them. She l- lets you have one, right? Even if you didn't help make them? Yeah. Yeah, okay, is that true? 
They all said yes. All right. So we don't make bread, but we do make cookies. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, she makes different bread. Okay. Well, I don't know what to do with that. I, different bread. I'll have to see this different bread. Yeah. All right. So someday, Aaron will have to bring in the different bread because I'm kind of curious what this different bread looks like. He makes it settle in a jaw. Okay. Yes. Yes. You do that a lot with bread. Well, the point to the story is, is in the story, because all the other animals didn't help make the bread or grow the wheat, they didn't get to eat the bread. Now, how is that different from Jesus? I do not know. Do not know? Does anybody else know? Sure. Yeah, Jesus will give you the bread anyway, even though we didn't help make it either. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? And nobody helped him plant the wheat. Nobody ground the wheat up. Nobody made it into bread. But Jesus still gives it to us anyway. Yeah. Is that, is that kind of different? I do not know. You do not know? <laughs> All right, that's, that's the end of the response. Well, which do you prefer? Jesus freely giving the bread or the hen making you work for your bread? Giving. Giving, yes. That's a good answer. And I suspect that all of us are in that boat. If we can get free bread, we're going to eat free bread. Especially if it's homemade. Yeah, yeah. And so Jesus tells us that he is for free. But he's also the bread that not only gives us eternal life, but gives us life now. Well, you don't have to go to the store to get him free. You just have to come here and, and get him free. Yeah. Yeah, and whenever you're baptized, you receive him free. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to pay anything. You don't have to clean your room or, or even take a bath. Well, maybe you should take a bath. But, you know, you don't have to do anything to get communion because Jesus made it free. And now we respond... And we try to love other people and, and so forth. But Jesus' bread is free because he gives himself. And that's part of the reason why we're so thankful. It's because we know that we didn't have any part in making the bread. But we sure like eating it. So let's pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for your grace and your love. That is so free and, and is so different than what our world teaches, and indeed what we ourselves sometimes teach. And we just give you thanks for the freeness that you give, that that love and that grace is not dependent on what we do or what we say, but just rather who you are. And for that, we give thanks. Gracious Lord, help us to be more like Jesus and less like the little red hen. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right, well, thank you. And thank you for the accompaniment. We, we finally got it in sync towards the end there. I think we actually had all four animals for the last one. I think the rest were just taking naps. Now, I'm going to take a quick survey. Because I'm going to tell a story from the Chronicles of Narnia. How many people have read the Chronicles of Narnia? At least one of the books. All right. So, so we're, we're not high in the list. Do we all know who C.S. Lewis is? Are we, are we better on that? All right. We're getting shy. Well, there's a story from early in the series, and, it, and there's a movie out if you choose not to read the book that does capture most of the key points. But Edmund, one of the brothers, there's brothers and sisters in the group, and they're a rather large group, and the setting is World War II England. Of course, they've been sent away from London to get away from the bombs and all that good stuff. And they find this closet. Three of them find the good guys. But Edmund stumbles into the queen. Yes, the evil queen, the snow queen, or the ice queen, I forget which, which she was called. But she was bad. She took over Arnie and turned it into a perpetual snow. You know, snow everywhere. And she banned Christmas. Anything that reminded us of God's love and joy and so forth. 
So he runs into her, and being a good Englishman, not that Americans can't be good too, but being a good Englishman, you automatically respond to the authority of a king or queen. And so he didn't even think that she could be evil. And she gives him Turkish delight. Now, there actually is such a thing as Turkish delight. I'm not going to ask you if you had it. But, but it's a, a snack, a treat. And Edmund had a particular taste for it. Some of us like chocolate. Some of us like other stuff. But he really liked Turkish delight. And so he ate all the pieces that was given to him. And he asked if he could have more. And she said, sure, there's rooms of Turkish delight back at my castle. But she wasn't really interested in making him happy. He was one of the four that was to come and help dethrone her. And so if she kills even one of them, she stays in power forever. But he is so obsessed with the Turkish delight that it takes Jesus to free him of his addiction to Turkish delight. You know, it kind of reminds me, if you've had a lab, that they're kind of the same way. If, if you leave, get one of those free feeding feeders and you keep it full, the dog will be 200 pounds by the end of the week. Because... They just can't stop themselves from eating. I don't know what it is about it, but labs are among the worst in terms of being gluttons. And I'm sure you have some cats or dogs that may have fit that category. That you can't just leave the food out and let them just eat to their heart's content because they will blow themselves up one way or the other. When we talk about the bread of life, We're talking about something very radical from our human experience. You know, we all have our addictions, whether it be to chocolate or wine or sports or whatever the case may be. And there's things that we just, if we could do it all the time, we'd probably do it. Or certainly a lot of the time. And we have a a situation where It's hard for us to fully feel satisfied because as soon as we're done, whether it be baseball season or football season or that food that we like, we almost immediately start to want it again. That's our human experience. Even the good things in our lives can sometimes cause us to be addicted to them. To have our focus so honed in on participating or eating or drinking or whatever it is. And it doesn't have to be illegal. Sometimes we think only addiction in terms of illegal drugs or something like that. But anything that captures our attention so much that it's almost always on our minds is technically an addiction. When Jesus talks about being the bread of life, he makes it clear that when you eat of him and drink of him, that you are satisfied. Now, that doesn't mean we're one and done, because that's what we use to sustain ourselves throughout our lives, to help us grow spiritually and in connection and in love with each other as well as Jesus. So, in some ways, I suppose we're addicted to Jesus. But there's a lot of competing elements out there that make it interestingly difficult because they take up space from Jesus. What fully satisfies gets replaced by things that make you crave and want to come back over and over again. And you're never quite satisfied. I would dare say that, especially in American society, that more often than not, we're probably not fulfilled. It seems like our society is built on the next thing that will make us happy or feel comfortable or or whatever the case may be. Heck, that's what advertising is all about. 
making you think that you need whatever they're selling. But even in our day-to-day lives, there's always something that we're missing or, or maybe would help our relationships better or whatever the case may be. Jesus is the only option that isn't a gateway drug, so to speak. You receive him and you're full. Now I know sometimes that's hard for us to understand because we do little tiny glasses and little tiny pieces of bread. It's part of the reason why the early church did it as part of a meal so that you'd have the the visual and the physical feeling of fullness when you left. But whether you go the meal route or whether you go just the little foretaste of the feast to come, it truly is the only thing that fills us. But like Edmund, we sometimes forget. If you read the book, I encourage you to do so. He even forgets his family ties and becomes part of the plot that almost brings the whole family down. All because he couldn't get past having Turkish delight. And that's important for us because on its own, our own Turkish delights are not bad. Certainly even his Turkish delight, although I suspect that since it's a magical book, it probably had some uh, nicotine or something added to it, so to speak. But either way, it became more important than everything that he said he believed. Whether it's loving his parents and his siblings, enjoying the things that teenage boys enjoy, sports and other stuff. His entire focus became getting more Turkish delight. One of the church's biggest and strongest gifts is the fact that we can go into a world that's always craving something and we have what sustains and fills. We don't have to guilt people into buying something or, or put special additives to make it more likely that you're going to come back to it. We have the one. Today as we celebrate that Jesus is the bread of life, we leave boldly. We leave stronger because we've received it But more importantly, we leave boldly because we know that's the only thing the world truly needs. The tough part is to building those relationships to help them see that. So we go forth freed from whatever Turkish delight we have even though we still sometimes stumble into it because we are human. But we also know that we have been fulfilled. But the Turkish delight does not have the final word in our lives and it doesn't have to have the final word in anybody else's as well. And now let us stand and sing You Satisfy the Hungry Heart 484.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all of creation. For those that are able, please kneel. <laughs> for the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, for congregations facing difficult decisions about their future, God, in your mercy, for health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water, God, in your mercy, for those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice. For corrections officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future. For all who mourn the death of a loved one, and for all who are sick. And we especially lift up Joe, Erica, John, Jan, Tim, Gail, Sean, Louise, Ruth, Melissa, Paul, Nikara, Madison, Pastor Lisa, Pastor Mark, George, Maggie, Flo, Phil, Gail, Janet, Marjorie, Cash, Kathy, Robert, Lisa, all of our homebound, and we especially lift up Carl and Mary this morning, and all those we name in our hearts. Gracious Lord, may you help us to be your hands that care for them. God, in your mercy. For this assembly gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who bake bread and prepare the vessels for our communion celebration. For those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound or hospitalized. God, in your mercy. And gracious Lord, we give you thanks that also work with us in our area, Hope and Cincinnati and their pastor Christy, as well as Westward Presbyterian and their pastor Norman. Be with them, fill them with your grace and peace, and help them freely give the bread that is you. God, in your mercy. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. And this morning we... We lift up Dominic and all the saints that we praise for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God, in your mercy. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace with one another in station. God's peace, and God's peace to all of you that are watching or listening.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what is sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our grace. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our maker, redeemer, and healer. In the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it for all to eat, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. And now for those of you that are at home, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you.
Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. We continue and close with Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, 656. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ.